You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by Myax, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. Myax is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody, that music means it is time once again for Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. My name is Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-compelling Options Insider Radio Network, reminding you there are a legion, a plethora of ways for you guys to get access to this content. We're literally getting hit up every day. It seems like by a new platform saying, hey, we got your stuff. You want to be on our platform. So there are a ton of on-demand ways for you guys to get it, including YouTube. A growing number of you like to enjoy it on YouTube. It puts a nice kind of static image up there so you can listen to it while you quote-unquote watch. But I know a lot of you enjoy it that way. If you want to engage more, then you want to go on the live. You want to engage with the shows, ask questions, all that fun stuff. Then the plus is the way to go. Of course, if you want some cool exclusive content, including options oddities coming up later today. And we got... Jack Schwager, the creator of Market Wizards, legendary book series, going to answer all your questions. He also runs Fun Cedar, so they actually will back small traders out there. So all sorts of fun stuff going on. It's coming up next Tuesday. If you want to check out all that cool stuff and a whole bunch more, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. Of course, however you get our content, make sure you keep rating and reviewing on your platform of choice if you like what you hear and keep those questions coming. We do love to hear from everybody out there. Let's see who we're hearing from. On the old show today, I'm pleased to be joined once again by the rockingest of lobsters himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the program. How goes the fog, sir? Is it starting to lift? Uh, the fog is lifting a little bit, but I have to say I, I'm managing all these products at Option Pit, and it's been like not being aggressive, watching all the uranium stuff blow up. You know, waiting for a dime to try to fill something. It goes up $3. I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I would say the fog is lifting, but there is still a layer of mist, unfortunately. Like there's still a layer of grumpiness and umbrage, which is the rock lobster we've all come to know and love as we keep on rolling right on into the volatility review. Volatility review. 
It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Vol Review, the portion of the show where we do just that. We review all the vol going on out there. And there was a lot more vol earlier in the session, not that long ago. Again, it goes back to just how fickle. The volatility gods can be right now. Most of the major indices are kind of sitting pretty, doing a whole lot of nothing right now. Pretty much unched on the day. All of them in the green, but ever so slightly. Two tenths of a percent, three tenths of a percent. The best we got is NASDAQ closing in on a tenth of a percent. But of course, it's a far cry from what we saw earlier in the session where we actually saw a little bit of red on the screen and we actually saw some green on the vol screens. In fact, not that long before showtime. We had uh, VIX and and spikes both up two points, if not more, from last week. Uh, That has come in considerably. We have spikes now coming into showtime at about an 18 exactly. That puts it uh, up about one and a quarter points from where it was this time last week. We've also got VIX cash shy of the 18 handle now, 17.90 or so. That puts it up about one and a third points from last week. Both of them were where spikes was pretty much at a 19 handle and uh, close to it. And VIX Cash was threatening it as well. Let's see, how high did we get intraday in VIX land? 1890. So just kissing it, just smooching the 19 level before we backed away. So again, this is what makes vol views so interesting. That makes a crystal ball so challenging <laughs> is that we could be right where you think we need to be right before showtime. And then the jig is up once the show begins. Of course, we'll see how this hour unfolds, what the vol gods have in store for us. But it does seem like the the juice that got put in over the course of this past week, particularly with the sell-off earlier in the week, and indeed that got exacerbated yesterday, is starting to mitigate somewhat heading into the weekend. Uh, coming at showtime, we had VVIX at about a 119. It puts it up about 12 points from where it was this time last week. And, of course, we'll, we'll get into all the spikes and all the other fun in a second as we go around the horn, Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, a lot going on out there in the world of Vol. It's coming, it's going, it's coming, it's going. It's, it was coming earlier this morning, and then it's starting to go again. What has been lighting up your tape out there, sir? Uh, you know, it's funny. It's Mark did a pretty, a pretty good thing on the SPX in our uh, OP market show today. Uh, he was looking at the uh, like the last six cycles trend of um, how SPX has been performing around um, expiration. And it was really weird because it looked like around the um, uh, like about a week before the uh, quarterly roll, there was some, you know, there's some roll issues with the SPX. Or I don't know if they're roll issues per se, but like because you had to kind of roll before expiration, if you notice, there's been a sell off a week before every ordinary expiration over the last six months. Um so and then they it kind of peters out after like one to two percent and then pops back up again if you look at the last six months really odd all around option expiration so uh mark was putting on his uh fancy chart hat and uh looking at that so today that's kind of what we got right we had a uh we had a range from almost 19 uh, vix cash um and i think we traded 16 briefly today um so when I, I look at that, I go, oh, you know, um, what the heck? <laughs> um, it was uh, so anyway, uh, looking at VIX and looking at the market. Go, I mean, the market really hasn't moved that much. It's like it's no more than half a percent per day tops since we peaked out. So, you know, for whatever reason, you know, we're moving down the curve. Uh, I have noticed uh, today there was actually a pretty good compression because I do have a Edge Hunter skewelator uh, product that kind of tells you where the vol was yesterday and then where the curve is now, and it kind of tracks the curve in real time. It's kind of cool, actually. Uh, developed by one of my students, we we go over the development of it, and then he actually brings the brings the idea to life, but. Um, as of today, um, vol dropped from the close yesterday, um, 
And as I started taking readings this morning, it has been dropping pretty uniformly per strike um, all the way, uh, at least for options expiring next week. So there isn't a lot of, you know, whatever there is bid is, you know, you had the buying announcement, you had the, you know, the, the mandates and the this and the that, and now governors are going to sue and then blah, 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 right? So, um, and the market seemed to take it okay, and then we kind of sell off. So I think there's something to Mark's theory, basically, about the uh, OPEX and, you know, the big quarterly role. And, you know, for whatever reason, just looking at the chart, I don't know the reason why you see it in the option expiration. Um because it's not like option expiration is a surprise to anybody because we know it's coming. But uh, I have to say, the little, uh, the, the uh, Mark with his putting his chart propeller hat on came up with some uh, kind of cool stuff. So as far as vol goes, it's the same thing. Like people are selling short-term vol into the hole, but, you know, they are, I think, buying protection farther out. So like the short-term vol is pretty cheap. And the longer term ball is a little more expensive. And <laughs> uh, I don't think it's going to change. Uh, the second part today is we have, like, again, more inflation numbers. Nobody cares. So it's, you know, pretty, pretty big inflation numbers. Um, and gold and GDX, like, I'm looking at all the gold sensitive stuff, not even moving. So it's one of those things where, um, it's like people see the data, but like they ignore it. <laughs> so it's very, you know, it's very odd. I had a a, a position in Kroger today, uh, just the remnants of one. But you know, Kroger actually had, I thought, decent earnings. Um, but um, you know, I thought decent earnings, but then they're like, okay, the supply chain is going to crush us next quarter and and i and i thought that was really odd like oh really like okay um your supply chain is going to crush so again look so they're trying to like load inflation into the whole picture again i a, a real mixed bag of information um but here we are you know 25 handles from the all-time highs i think so um so, uh, oh, and I've, I'm sorry. And the last ball inducing thing, Apple lost their case to um, uh, um, Fortnite. So Apple kind of fell out of bed today. Google fell out of bed a little bit. Um, actually, Mark came up with some clever trades in there, like some flies for our pro chat room. Um, some cheapy flies that are paying pretty good right now. Um, also, I think that could have an effect on Google. So like, yeah, Google's down 30 bucks. It was only down five bucks. And I like, I tried to buy some puts and the put markets just went freaking <laughs> five dollars wide. Although I should have bought them because Google was even on the day or down like two bucks and I was down 30. So, but I do have a problem with paying up. So anyway, that's kind of my day. A little frustrating. I got to sell some puts out in the, uh, some, uh, index just puts from my kind of my like my vol uh vol pairs and stuff so i i've been writing some puts for a few days four or five days so i did get some decent sales there but uh, you know like trying to trying to actually trade and get stuff done today um trying to hop on the uranium train uh yesterday i was a little greedy and today everything just blew up again um so I'm going to just say it's it's a frustrating day and it's still a little bit of a foggy day. But uh, and I'm not like liquidity is kind of weird. It doesn't feel um, super liquid either. So I think there is a little underlying there's an underlying um, uncomfortableness about the market. I'll just say that I'll say that like that underlying uncomfortableness. And I'm uncomfortable with the idea of Mark wearing this fancy hat. I'm not sure. I'm going to see photos of this to to see this charting hat here in person. But you're right, Apple uh, getting the go smacked down from the judge. Not quite the David versus Goliath, because Epic is still a pretty big company. 
course, next to Apple, no one's really that big, right? So let's just say a, a big guy against a much bigger guy. How about that? But yeah, they, they did make that one happen after sitting out a lot of their revenue from iOS for the better part of this past year on this case. So interesting stuff. They're all the people who've been slinging those Apple weekly calls, Mr. Rock Lobster. been talking about them on Options Oddities. I got a feeling it'll probably pop up again on our radar again later today. Maybe not so happy at this news. Apple uh, threatening the 150 level right now off about three and a half bucks. And uh, but, you know, speaking of surprises, we are now joined. I am pleased to say partway through the volatility review by the once in future Dr. Bix himself, Mr. Rhodes, Mr. Russell Rhodes. Welcome back to the program, sir. Two days in a row on the network. To what do we owe the privilege, sir? I know. And I and, and I, I feel like I've been I'm like. I've got two strikes two days in a row. I felt like I, I, I surprised you a bit when we were talking about uh, options on futures. And then I was knee deep in cleaning out the basement and noon snuck up on me. And I apologize. Our producer has her eye on you, sir. You better watch out. Oh, I'm sure she does. She's I, vengeful. I just, she is vengeful. <laughs> I, I, I think that I, I lost that offer of being the first in-person person when you guys reopened the vast studios there in the uh, near West Loop. She may have been on the horn uh, to some so other guests as we speak for, uh, you know, to, to lock down that oh, yeah, first I guest know, I, seat, I, so. I know when I'm, I live in a house full of women. I always know when I'm in the doghouse. <laughs> and I'm in the doghouse. Um, but let's see if you can redeem yourself, sir. What is lighting up your tape out there in the world of volatility this week? You know, this is going it, to, it's boring because it's long term. But, oh my God, March and April, VIX futures way out on the curve are basically in line with each other. You can't tell me that it's not such a, that, that it wouldn't be such a bad idea to take a short March, long April position right now, uh, just for the heck of it. And then maybe when we're early into 20, 2022 and, you know, March is three is the third month and April's the fourth month that we're probably not going to get, you know, probably not. I'd be surprised if we don't see March at a nice discount, uh, you know, maybe a half a point or a point or something like that. But in the meantime, you would have some short volatility exposure there, theoretically. And if we, you know, if the Delta Mu Sigma Alpha uh, version of, of um, COVID comes along and really starts to hit us hard and we get another volatility spike, that those two are so far, far out on the curve, you probably wouldn't experience a lot of pain. So I know that's, you know, I, I know that volatility traders aren't really big fans of, uh, you know, right after Labor Day, taking a look at trades that they'd unwind, unwind around spring break. But that's just something I've been kind of looking at for the last three days. And I think it's just, uh, it's giving me a nice opportunity there. Well, speaking of said curve, let's head on out there to the land of the futures let's start in spikes futures you know i was really only half joking on the show recently it seems like i'm getting hit almost every day with a new record out there in spikes futures land and that continued this week let's see september 8th just a few sessions ago they hit a new daily volume record in spikes futures twelve thousand and six contracts actually this was released on the 8th for september 7th so pretty much every week not multiple times per week we're seeing new uh, daily volume records out there which again everyone out there who's looking at the options and i've been kind of playing out there a little bit now looking at some of the options as well and it does seem like we are starting to see that tightening effect out there no longer is it the case where you know the vix is super tight and then the spikes is like a dollar wide you're seeing more relevant markets let's say out there which is nice because if you want to work something you, you don't have to just come in and crush a bit or lift an offer you actually have a little bit of room to come in <laughs> you have a better chance of getting filled so more of these types of days these twelve thousand plus record days out there in the land of spikes futures is good for everyone out there who's been listening and hitting us up saying man i really want to dive into the spikes waters but they're not quite ready for me yet well they're getting the water is getting better the temperature is getting better out there so more days like this is beneficial uh, to everyone let's get out now to the vix futures part of the curb the one that mr rhodes was just breaking down out there and getting a little bit closer to homes look at the front portion of the curve and again this was a snapshot we took right before showtime it obviously evolves minute by minute 
<laughs> we probably should have a running evaluation of the futures curve throughout the show here. But we have to talk about other things, too. And coming into showtime, we had a little bit of a bid to that front portion of the curve. That has probably decreased even more since we started talking about it at the top of the show here. Uh, the set future was up nearly a full point coming into showtime, about nine-tenths of a point. And the OC future a little bit less, about six-tenths, about almost two-thirds of a point. Again, it probably has, has given much of that back now <laughs> since the show has begun. But Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster, what are your thoughts on what we're seeing out there in the VIX futures curve? And indeed, what do you have to say for what Mr. Rhodes was thinking about? A little bit of a term structure play out there, sir. Oh, uh, a, a term structure play out to what? What was he saying, like April or May or something like that? <laughs> March, <laughs> March, April. March, April. I could be dead by that. You have to excuse Andrew. He's still recovering from his COVID fog, sir. So you have to tell him yeah, things I'm like three welcome. times. I, I, could ha- I could get COVID again and be dead by the time that, that, that future. <laughs> I'm not saying well, And that. even if that happens, because of the way the trade's structured, you won't get run over. Go ahead. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, I know Russell has, by the way, he has given option pit when we had our uh, webinar, seminars there in the good old days of the SIBO. Like endless great ideas. So I never poo poo a Russell idea because they're generally pretty darn good. However, my life is usually the short end of the curve, no more than uh, uh, two terms out because my uh, the pit crazies like action in their VIX. Um, so we tend to have, tend to look at the shorter end where things are a little more wiggly. Um, uh, and, and right now I have to say the short end is pretty damn boring. Um, Probably as Russell has noted, right? You're like, you've got the pretty steep contango. VIX is relatively high. Like I'm, you're associating this curve shape with VIX more like a 12 instead of where it is at 18. Yeah. Um, you've got like really low front month falls. I mean, we had single digit vol last week, um, and it's like it's a recipe for nothing moving. I mean, I think. Like, what do we got? We've got, we've probably had a 16, 19 range and, you know, futures are moving like a little tiny bit. So like the futures are basically set up when VIX rises, the front end rises and you get a little compression and all of a sudden everything looks flat again, like, or just the, the extra premium, the curve just goes away because the forward vol flattens out a little bit. So it's, the market is said like, let's hurry up and do nothing. And that's kind of what the VIX curve feels like. So. I've been sticking to, you know, more like um, like like midterm VXX or uh, like when VIX, a lot of the VIX puts when they come in the money, um, sticking to plays that are more trying to get as much intrinsic value out of the decay, potential decay as possible, and really not looking for VIX cash to move a ton. You know, and they've been paying okay just a little bit. Uh, at least I got to sell some of the the spy puts and stuff that uh, I have against those positions. So they made a little money, but it hasn't been a very exciting time for VIX. Like the, the, uh, um, the Thompson brothers, I love their line. Like nobody makes money when VIX trades between 16 and 20. Um, and they're right. So like for all you out there that are like looking for, Oh, the ball is going to explode. The ball's... Okay. It might, but <laughs> you're paying a steep price. Uh, Volleyball is expensive, and the reality is we just don't break out. You know, we <laughs> we don't get more than a one percent move down on any day that I can think of over the last couple of months. Um, you know, maybe one. Uh, so the vol trade itself is pretty hard, and you know, I living on the decay, the future decay is you know, but it's it's just not it's just not you know it's not big bucks and it's not very exciting, but. And I don't see that changing right now. I mean, we've had a relatively the same future pre- pattern. Um, I'm going to say since March or April, maybe uh, Russell knows exactly, but um, it's just not like there's not a lot of this kind of kind of contango with VIX cash this high because the mm-hmm. options the like the vol options are just expensive. It's hard to make money trading them. So um, unless you like selling the juice, but, you know, we have uh, students that, you know, are just learning about VIX and VXX, and I don't really think it's the best way for them to just start going whole hog and just whacking this stuff out. Um, (laughs) 
because as you know, sometimes things can go up. And then once you kind of learn how to buy the stuff, then you kind of learn how to sell the stuff. So anyway, this is kind of where we are in Vol World. Um, I'm trying not to sound as grumpy as I am about it, but it's just not very exciting. Maybe if Russell's going out to April, April and March. <laughs> good exactly. Day. I mean, no, oh, there's not a lot to do. <laughs> I'm done. Go, Russell. Well, I mean, it, the thing is, oh God, even the short, you know, even the short dated stuff where, you know, it, 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 where I like to buy, you know, and in the money put that doesn't have a lot of time value. Just because VVIX has remained elevated, that seems to be bleeding into those options as well. And normally I could buy an option for maybe five, six, seven hundred bucks that had a nickel or a dime of time value as an expiration was approaching. And I'm just not seeing that. You know, it, you, you, it, it's like you said, the options are expensive. And it's not just that the options are expensive to, to try and buy a, you know, a VIX call. If, if you think we're getting ready to have one of those volatility events and a big move to the upside, uh, they're actually expensive if you're trying to play to the downside a little bit as well. Um, and yeah, I, I had the same thought that you did. If I'm looking out to, if the best thing I can come up with is March versus April, <laughs> it's it's just not an exciting time on the shorter end of the curve. And I think the, the other thing is, is you just don't know when... Um, you don't know when the next volatility event is going to happen. So I, I don't feel like you have, you, there are volatility sellers out there. They're definitely still out there. We had a conference uh, this, this past week in several at EQ Derivatives, and we had several people talk about how they've remained consistently uh, short volatility one way or another. Uh, but I don't think maybe the more uh, the systematic people are there, but the more opportunistic people are still a little bit skittish. And when you don't have those sellers, it results in higher VVIX and uh, less aggressive buyers as well. Like you just, like you said a minute ago about not wanting to pay up for options. I think a, a lot of people are like that. You're not alone on that. Let's see what's going on out there now in the world of vol options. Like I mentioned, we're seeing new records in spikes futures that should equate to more options flow. And that's pretty much exactly what we're seeing out there right now, listeners. In fact, the OI has pretty much doubled since our last show which is good to see for the pretty much the last few episodes we've seen most of the spikes oi dominated by this kind of four-way a thousand each of the sep 17 21 put spread versus the 24 30 vertical now it has pretty much almost doubled we've added on a three-way out there the ox 17 put versus the 23 30 call if it's like most of the other trades we've seen out there in spikes it probably is looking to pay for that upside call vertical with using that downside put. Most of the trades we see going up out there in spikes do tend to be biased to the upside, which again, no surprise, it is a vol product. That is the primary use case. But still, good to see that the futures numbers are now starting to actually result in material increases in options OI, which again, all of this is just going to lead to tighter markets for everybody out there, which is the plan. Let's see if we're seeing some decent markets and some decent volume out there in the land of VIX listeners. It was an okay day coming into showtime, and it still is. I guess you can technically call it okay. They're closing in on a quarter of a million contracts, about 243,000 contracts on the tape right now out there in VIX land. The ADV moving in the right direction, which is good because we have that truncated holiday week. Obviously, no trading on Monday, listeners. So the ADV is now up to 431,000. It puts it up about 12,000. You know, for a long time, it, it was threatening and then broke through the 400K level in the other direction. So three-something ADV in VIX isn't good for everybody, anybody, really. You want, you want more paper up there than that, and it's getting back north of the 400K level. Let's look really quickly at what the size positions are out there in VIX land right now. Cost you 161,000 contracts to break into the top 10. By the way, the top 10 is exactly evenly split. Between calls and puts, 50-50. So read into that what you will. Number 10 are, are the OC 50s, 5-0. Interesting strike, 161,000 of those, followed by 162,000 for the SEP 30s. Number two, number, or number nine, I should say. Number eight, 170,000 of the SEP 35. So a nice optimistic call strip there on the bottom of the top 10. Number seven, 171,000 of the SEP 16 puts. Number six, 184,000 of the SEP 17 puts. Number five, 191,000 of the SEP 25s. 
So I will say four of our <laughs> four of our five calls have already come and gone. Uh, number four, though, our final call in the top five here. 199,000 of my favorites in the top 10. The ever popular Nove 60s. <laughs> Nearly 200K of those bad boys out there. Someone loves that Nove 60 strike. Number two, 228,000 of the Oct 14 puts. Number two, 252,000 of the SEP 15 puts. And number one out there in Vixland, which is a decently sizable bullet. You know, it's been pretty light out there of late, but this is getting a little bit better out there. 287,000 of the October 17 puts. So you can read into that what you will. The fact that the size position is that put versus it was the SEP 25s until not that long ago. Those are now still around 191,000. So almost 100,000 more of the Oc 17 puts open than the SEP 25. So again, read into all that what you will. About 7.8 million contracts open out there. About four and three quarters million on the calls and about 3 million, 3.05 or so million open on the puts let's get out some of the action we saw this week what there was let's start with today like we said not a ton of paper on the tape closing in on a quarter of a million contracts let's see the number one most active contract today the sep 25s with about seventeen thousand five hundred, followed by oh this is another good strike <laughs> the oc 75s going up for almost the same amount seventeen thousand four hundred. looks like those when i just pulled those up looks like they went up late for 23 cents Kind of uh, mid-market leaning towards the offer. I don't see... Oh, there was a spread. Looks like against the... Was against the Dees 95s. <laughs> the Ox 75, Dees 95, 17,400 of the 75s versus 16,000 of the Dees 95s. That's an interesting, interesting calendar. Uh, let's see. Number two out there today are the Ox 75s. Like you mentioned, 17,400. Number three. As I just mentioned, 16,000 of the Dees 95s. Then number four today, almost 11,000 of the SEP 20s. And number five, about 11,000 as well of the SEP 20 puts. Yesterday, a more active day, 446,000 contracts on the tape. The number one most active contract, about 47,000 of the OC 17 puts, followed by 39,000 of the OC 18 puts. So some put verticals going up there probably. Number three, 30,000 almost exactly of the SEP 18 puts. Number four, the SEP 17 puts about 25,000. And rounding out the top five, the SEP 25s, about 22,000 of those bad boys. So they are still popping up there, the SEP 25s. Wednesday, the most active day of the week so far. Obviously, we don't have today's numbers fully in the books yet. But so far, 485,000 contracts on the tape on Wednesday. Just a tick under 50,000 for the number one spot on Wednesday. That was the SEP 17 puts. Followed by number two, 48,000 of the SEP 20 calls. Number three, 41,000 of the Nove 45 calls. Number four, 33,000 of the SEP 17 puts. And rounding out the top five on Monday, or excuse me, Wednesday, 21,000 of the SEP 16 puts. So a lot of action. Nove 17 puts on Wednesday. Nearly 50,000 of those bad boys. Tuesday, 299,000 contracts on the tape. The most active contract, SEP 17 puts, about 24,000. Followed by SEP 16 puts, number two, 21,000. Number three, SEP 20 calls, about 19,500. Number four, the OC 14 puts, 14,600. And rounding out the top five on Monday, SEP 18 puts with about 14,000. Obviously, we were closed on Monday, so so no action there. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, we'll start with you, sir. What's light up your tape this week from a VIX options perspective? And if you have any thoughts on this funky calendar that appears to be going up today, this Ox 75, D95, have at it, sir. That, first off, the, 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 I, I can never, ever, ever get a handle on those types of trades. where Because it's not like anybody supposed, should be giving you margin relief by you know buying a December option and selling an October option. That's just, that's not how the volatility space works. So I would think if somebody's buying a long-dated uh, you know, 95 call, it's for margin purposes, but they, they shouldn't get, be getting margin relief on that. So I've got no idea what people are thinking about doing when they have those way out of the money strike prices, unless they're using them in some way to pass some sort of stress test or hedge against Armageddon or something along those lines. I just, I, I've never been able to get a handle on, uh, and it's not, that's not the only one. I had somebody specifically asking me about a very similar October, November trade a week or two ago. And it was the the same thing. And then I got asked about another one and it turned out it was a trade error <laughs> that uh, they didn't notice had gotten taken off the tape. 
Uh, but like, yeah, like I said before, the thing that really is kind of frustrating to me, I guess, because it's the way that I like to trade an awful lot is just how expensive, how expensive VIX options are in both directions right now. And, you know, maybe that's where we're seeing way out of the money option trades where people are uh, taking advantage or thinking that they're taking advantage of the, uh, you know, the the excess implied volatility, which hopefully will not become justified for for those folks that decide to get short volatility right now. Mr. I think it's expensive oh. for a reason. And I think it's expensive for a reason because everybody really does think we're going to have a big shoe drop in the next uh, three to six months. And the, the, just switching markets for one second on that uh, right now out of the money, um, 10% out of the money SPX puts are very, very expensive relative to history when you look at them compared to at the money options. So people are not necessarily, but at the money is kind of cheap right now. Uh, 30 day, even 30 day out of the money options are cheap. It's going out three to six months where the SPX options are really expensive. So, you know, near term dull, but long term people are braced for, for something. That would be good for be good for VIX, but not necessarily good for the equity markets. Yeah, you're seeing, you know, ridiculous, you know, premiums, 30 percent bid for those puts in some of those months. And in, in the S, you're right. It, it's nuts out there. Of course, that's against, as you mentioned, a lower kind of at the money. So take that some of that premium is a little bit relative to a much lower starting point. But still, it, it is the bid is out there for these things. Mr. Rock Lobster, same question for you. First off, how many of these Ox 75s, D95s did you do today? And then outside of that, anything else lighting up your tape? And an otherwise kind of mostly quiet uh, VIX options week, sir. Yeah, I just I went with Russell on the on the on the strangeness on those on those spreads, you know, where you know people try. The only thing I can assume is they're just trying to back into some you know cheap December calls, and they just don't think we're going to get the kind of you know we're not going to get that seventy five action uh, between now and October expiration. Um, but the, uh, I'll tell you, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, uh, where, where my head is. So VIX traded, almost traded 17 today, I believe like on early this morning, there was that markdown in VIX cash. Um, and the 17 puts, I think traded 20, maybe 25 cents. They might've got to 25, maybe. For next week and they're a dime now and normally i would say like okay we're one handle away um yeah that's kind of wow that looks like kind of a no-brainer but i don't even want to buy them i didn't want to pay a dime i can't believe it like <laughs> we were like 16 half with 16 well before the three-day weekend right 16 handle low 16 like 16 10 or something last on friday and I have no interest in the 17s at a dime. And you can buy all you want at 15 cents. So that's giving you kind of a sense. Like this is this is not a normal 17 cash fix. It's a very odd <laughs> vol. Um, and and as you guys already alluded to with the volumes, right? You got that kind of like buyers in the back month. Uh, as Mark would say, a lot of people are hedged, well hedged buying crap loads of puts out there, um, but they don't give a damn about the short term. Um, and I think there was a, I think a lot of traders learned a reason like, okay, if I just buy puts and I buy these equities like last year, for instance, and I don't do anything and I watch my equities go up a ton. And then every once in a while I roll the puts up. Wow. I made a lot of money. Um, so I don't think folks are too anxious to sell their stocks. And that's like, that's the reality. But they'll, they'll just roll up the puts because they got such huge gains on, on the long side of some of these stocks or a lot of stocks. So, um, but anyway, so that gives you like, there's a lot of like strange push and pull forces between terms. And that's why with, you know, three days, well, five, five days total, but three, two trading days, you can buy all the sub 17 puts you want at 15 cents when VIX cash traded, you know, traded 17, like almost broke the 17 handle on the 16. I think it did actually for like two seconds. Uh, trying to see. 
Um, so again, like really odd pricing. Um, and it, and again, it's reflective of just what's going on. And, um, and it, it has become very boring because if you trade like trading of all products and you like trading SBX, um, I have not been overly short SBX anywhere, shape or form. Thankfully, it's just, you don't have a lot of that cool push and pull, like market down, like one and a half, two percent, you get to blow out your puts, right? Then you get to have a little fun with ball products. You get a little bit of action there. You get, you know, okay, 22, maybe you get 15, 16, like, something and we're not just not seeing that like it's okay we're gonna just be 18 forever um and that's okay i know i sound a little bit grumpy on it because it's more fun when things move around but you know i i don't know when that's gonna change you know we got these huge inflation numbers and all this other kind of crap nobody cares not like nobody cares like these are pretty big inflation numbers i thought but uh, you know i i just guess i just assume that well, because the Fed's got it handled, you know, they'll they'll print or not print or do this or that and make everything cool. So I, I guess that's what we have. Um, so from a volume point of view, yeah, I would just point out that like trades that would be interesting, maybe, I don't know, pre-COVID, um, there is definitely a, uh, a, a COVID, you know, there's like a COVID feel to the trade, to the vol trade. It's definitely a little different. Uh, and 16 is the new 12. And that's kind of what we got. So uh, I, I wish I had something more exciting about the volume, but I I haven't added any October VIX or anything like that at all yet. So which is kind of odd for me at this part of the cycle. I'm starting to eyeball a little bit, but it's freaking expensive. Like, you know, <laughs> the 16 puts are 20, 20 cents in October. And you could probably buy all you wanted at a quarter, and you would. I'm at this point, you would be lucky to make a dime on them. I think so. Again, very, very, very uh, odd price. And the 19 puts are a buck and a half, and they feel expensive at a 90 ball. So, mm -hmm. I, I again, I'm just doing the gripe thing here a little bit, but uh, the vol products, I just think, I think they're a very tough trade right now. If you're a vol premium seller. Um, like the only thing I would say that'd be a little bit better would be like kind of you can kind of get a little long strangly action in VIX or VXX and then like sell SPX iron condoms because you do have like this the downside for SPX is pretty damn expensive. So you get a lot of melt there and you don't have to spend a ton for VIX. So that's not a bad um, you know, if you like kind of risk controlled ball sales, um, the pricing there probably isn't too bad. Um and as soon as I become ungrumpy next week, I'll start looking at it again. Now that I can actually think about options, uh, you know, in a in a relatively useful. Manner. Well, let's see what's useful out there in the land of the products you folks love to fade. Let's start with VXX. Not getting his fade on this week, though. Is getting some more kicking in today. Maybe by the end of the session, it'll be back to unched on the week. It's still up about half a point right now, about twenty five sixty five or so from where it was this time last week. I've seen some paper out there about 200,000, actually 199,000 to be precise out there in VXX land. The ADB also ticking up. It's about 222,000 contracts up 11,000 from this time last week. Let's do a quick breakdown here. Kind of come up against. So let's do like a top five out here in VXX. Number five, we've got the SEP 23 puts 23,000 of those. Number four, SEP 27 puts 24,000 of those. Number three, about 26,000 of the SEP 40s. Number two, 27,000 of the SEP 24 puts. And the number one position out there is still the pre-split adjusted BXX1 SEP 10 calls with about 32,500 of those bad boys. In terms of what's active out there today, it's actually SEP 38s going out next week that have done about 11,300 contracts today, followed by about the SEP. Everything else is going out today. 25 half puts with 11,000, 26 calls, also 9,200 of those. 26 puts, 7,300 of those, and 6,200 of the SEP 25 puts. Uh, we'll lump them in out there as well with the products you folks love to fade. UVXY at about 22 and a quarter coming into showtime. up about a point. I'm sure it has dropped uh, even since then, since the start of the show. Let's see, UVXY still holding firm at about a 22, so up about three quarters of a point from this time last week. 
Uh, the ADV, 137,000. That's ticking up about 3,000 from this time last week. Today, we saw about 130,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, most active out there today, about 17,000 of the SEP 22 puts. Again, that's at the money put going out today, followed by the SEP 21 puts, about 10,500 of those. And the SEP 22 calls, 8,900. SEP 22 next week, so SEP 17, 22 calls, about 6,500. And rounding out the top five today, the SEP 23 calls going out today with about 4,400. We'll do the same thing here at top five here really quickly. Uh, number five in UBXY. By the way, 50-50 calls to puts exactly in UBXY and 70-30 puts to calls in VXX, if you are wondering. Number five, got 7,300 of the SEP 17 puts. Number four, 7,300 as well of the SEP five calls. These are all going out next week, by the way, listeners. Surprisingly, only the contract we have going out today are 8,000 of the SEP 21 puts for number three, followed by... 8,700 of the SEP 75 calls, my old favorite, the SEP 75. I've yet to get around to trading in some of that upside action, but uh, I probably should. It seems like there's, there's some interesting stuff up there. And number one are still the UBXY1, 9,300 of the, of the Jan 1 puts. By the way, number four, the SEP 5 calls, those are UBXY1 as well. So two pre-split adjusted contracts in our top five here. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, we'll start with you. Anything lighting up your tape? out there in the land of VXX or UBXY this week, sir? Not necessarily lighting up my tape, but what I find interesting in, in both of the option rundowns that you've done is that it, 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 I, I've never been on with you where it's been, it's been split 50-50 calls and puts. Now that might, and it's been a while since I've been on the show with you, so it may be something that's become a little bit. Normal. We've been hovering around uh, there for a little while. It's like sixty forty one way or the other. This week it is exactly split, though. You're right. So, which just uh, kind of you would not, that's almost like I, I would equate something like that to uh, all of a sudden having like a smile instead of skew with the, uh, with, the with the SPX curve. You know what I mean? I just it's just something that you would never expect. But I think it's very indicative of uh, what's making um, Andrew so grumpy. It's just, it's just, you know, it, I think it's just uh, maybe it's indicative of a whole ton of uncertainty. There are many things making the Rock Lobster grumpy. You don't have to look I too know. far. I want to go, I wanna go give him a hug with a mask on. <laughs> he'll get he'll get really grumpy if I get filled on those. He'll get he'll get. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get really grumpy if I get filled on those uh, VIX uh, 17 puts that I'm working on. Just to mock him. But Mr. Rock Lobster, what are, <laughs> aside from your grumpiness and umbrage, what, do you, what is lighting up your tape in the land of VXX and UBXY, sir? Uh, again, again, interesting. So first off, VXX next week will be uh, uh, pretty much all the October future. Ooh. So you do have that potential at UBXY as well. Um, so... You know, if Mark's thesis holds up, uh, you could have some interesting trade. Um, uh, he was kind of still looking for like that OPEX thesis, which because, you know, we get kind of sell off and then the pop after everybody kind of does their role. Um, so that, that was kind of a fun one. So that that could be a a some kind of VXX strangly action uh, for people that like if we actually the vol takes off. But, you know. It won't. Um, but, you know, the, the uh, you, like call spreads are cheap. Like, again, that's the best thing about trading a product like VXX. Um, you know, you get five, six, seven point call spreads don't cost very much, only about 50 cents. And hard to believe that's where they are. Um, and we're, there's about a dollar decay in the product. So, you know, it's even if I say 26, so you, you don't have to pay a whole lot more in VXX next week um, over the, uh, what I would call like the in, 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 intrinsic decay value for options. So that is an, an interesting trade that way, like you buy a strangle for maybe $1.40, $1.45, something like that, you know, and you know, it should theoretically decay about a dollar and you have that massive October future hanging out there. So there's, there's definitely that possibility that, VXX could be down a dollar and a half or two bucks next week, just on uh, just kind of a, a little pullback involved. Doesn't have to be big. So, or you know, or the cost of the strangle is relatively low, and you all could go up. Actually, go up. Um, doesn't feel like it's going to though. So, 
again, it's like eh, they're all trades right around the margin. And yes, I, I would, when I'm this grumpy, I would go buy those puts for a dime too. They'll probably go to a dollar. Okay. <laughs> like I own some 18 puts and I'll be happy if they go to a dollar. So like, and I can't, so we have no realized ball in the market. We still can't get VIX to go to 17. So it's it's what it is. You know, you can't complain about it. Uh, I'm glad that yeah, I can. Like, yeah, I guess you complain about it because I'm doing plenty of it. Um, and it's funny. I was I sold 18 puts for a dollar twenty five, dollar thirty, dollar forty a um, couple of weeks ago. And I'm like, you know what? This is probably going to be the high for these things. And damned if it wasn't. And you know, cash was 16. It's just this. <laughs> so the the curve like never shook out. Um, so anyway. So the key to vol puts is when they make you money, sell them, take your money. Uh, so at least that that made me a lot less grumpy. You know what but, always makes the rock lobster grumpy? It's your email and question. So let's get to some really quickly in the volatility voicemail. It's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow volatility traders. It's time to check the volatility voicemail. Make your voice heard by dialing 779-669-4VOL. Posting a comment on the optionsinsider.com, sending an email to questions at the optionsinsider.com, or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options or facebook.com slash the options insider. Oh, you know what? Our astute chat is reminding me that I neglected to play everyone's favorite theme song. <laughs> so allow me to rectify that error right now. Now, Russell's Weekly Rundown. <laughs> yes. Even the grumpy rock lobster, that has to bring a smile to his face, hearing that bit. tune. Of, co does. of course, we have no time for Russell's Weekly Rundown this week because he kind of joined us late, but... We do have really quickly to squeeze in some of you folks in the live chat. We got Luigi here from the pro club. He wants to know, does the lobster feel the same as the meatball towards SVXY and UVXY? How about Mr. Road? So Mr. Rock Lobster, we'll start with you. Do you feel the same as the meatball towards SVXY and UVXY? Sir? Um, I don't know the exact. I think Mark likes UVXY as a product. It, it, like it's a fun put trading product. Um, SVXY, I just, you know, doesn't get me out of bed in the morning. I just don't care about it anymore. It was pretty cool, and they wrecked it, and I don't trust them. So um, that's the deal there. Now, doesn't mean you can't make money trading it. It's just I don't care about it. Yeah, I'm kind of similar on both of those. Mr. Rhodes, do you feel the same, sir? Yeah, I, I, I really do. Um, the one thing that I like about uh, UVXY just is in, in this, yeah, I've just talked about doing a trade that I might be in for three or four months. Um, I think one of the great things about UVXY, if you have the ability to do so, is if, you know, if the, if the stock market is having a pretty tough day in the morning and you know we always rebound, um, UVXY is an Excellent short term, and I mean day trade on the short side. So that's that's what I like about UBXY. I wish, and it's in front of the SEC. You know, the, there's somebody out there that really wants to put out a uh, a 100 short version of SVXY, uh, which is an area that I really wish we had something in. Uh, but SVXY being 50 percent short, like I, I, I like the phrase. Not really excited when I get out of bed about that one. All right. Let's see if we get excited for our prognostications because it is time for the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, so I'm like the worm turning a little bit again out here, listeners, as we're starting to see a little bit of vol creep back in. Spikes is back up to about almost at 18 and a half, about 1845. And we got VIX Cash hovering around 18 and a quarter. So both of them have ticked up. Spikes up, up almost half a point, and VIX up about a third, a little more than a third of a point since the start of the show. So interesting stuff. Or the, will the worm turn again? We shall see. Let's see. Last week. It was myself, the Rock Lobster, and Mr. Jark from Myax, and I had a 16 and a quarter. 
which uh, pretty much, yeah, didn't happen this week. <laughs> Flirted with it, but that was about it. Uh, Lobster had 16.40, so almost 16 and a half. And Tom was feeling a 15 handle. Spoiler alert, we didn't really get that. <laughs> so uh, not a lot of love out there. And then uh, listeners were all over the place as well. We got one looking kind of close. It's like JJ's at an 18.70. That's about as close as we have. He's still three-tenths of a point away on spikes and even more on VIX. That looks like about the closest we got. Everyone else was looks like 16, 17. We got a 14 and three quarters in here. <laughs> got some people fading some ball. If that 14 and three quarters comes to pass and I get filled on these VIX puts, that'll be a fun party. But uh, not, <laughs> not so much yet. I'm still working it out there. Uh, Nichols was at a 17 even, so no joy there. It looks like we got... I don't see options queen. I don't see where she was here. Maybe they'll have to, my producer will put it up. She, usually she's pretty prescient, so we'll see what she had out there. But a long way around to saying no one really winning this week. So that means our guest, Mr. Rhodes, you, did, you didn't get to guess last week, so you get to go first. What are you feeling for this time next week, sir? Uh, for this time next week, uh, where are we at this very moment? Uh, if only you listened to earlier in the segment, about 1845 or so in spikes no, no, trying, and about yeah, trying, 18, to pull the quote up 18, qu- about it was about an 18 quarter in VIX cash and about 1825. 18, 18, 18, yeah. 1828. 18, 18, well, my birthday is 828. So I'm going with 1828. So literally unched for this time next yeah, week. <laughs> I think uh, it's probably the best. I mean, that seems to be everybody. It, it, we got 50% bulls and 50% bears out there, right? Pretty much. So uh, there you go. That's, <laughs> so you're not going to get it anywhere. That's the in-depth yeah. analysis you're going to get from Mr. Rhodes. He guessed his birthday, <laughs> listeners. There we go. It's like he's playing the scratch-offs <laughs> at the corner store. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here. What we got? Mr. Rock Lobster, you were ever so slightly closer than me, so you get to go next. What are you feeling for this time next week, sir? I have to say, I, I guess my grumpiness, you actually... That is about the nicest thing you've uh, you've said to me in uh, the crystal ball. That I was ever so slightly closer than you. So that I'm gonna just take that compliment. You just you just made my whole day bright and cheery. Um, I, you know, I had and I had the same mind as Russell did. So I'm gonna go like uh, you know, because this is just again by next week I'm gonna say 17.99. So I will not be accused of. Of uh, scumming Russell's uh, 1828. Okay. 17.99, you said? Okay. And by the way, our, our good boy Luigi, he's claiming he was at an 18.35 for this week. I don't, I'll have to ask our producers to check and verify. I don't have that data in front of me. If you were at an 18.35, Luigi, then winner, winner, chicken dinner for you. You're within about a tenth of a point on, on Vic. So certainly within our margin of error. So our producers, We'll check that there, but I don't I don't see that right now. He says he's going for sixteen thirty-five uh, next week. And so I'm feeling while we're while we check all that data, trust but verify here on the options insider radio network. Oh, you said he, our producers are saying you were at sixteen thirty-five for this time last week. So that's what they're saying. So they're saying you were two points away. But hey, nice try. Hey. If you're not cheating, you're not trying out there. I tip my cap to you out here. So, yeah, so we got a 17.99, 18.28. We're kind of coming up against it. We got to get it ready for oddities here. But oh, this is that weird zone. Since I do want to mock the Rock Lobster, and I hope I am filled on those puts, I'm going to say this time next, I can't say a 16 handle. That's nuts. Um, and we do have expiration in the middle of the week. So I only needed to dance there by Wednesday. So let's say by this time next week, I'm going to say, we're at a 17.45. So there's our market listeners. 17.45 for me on the bottom. Rock Lobster coming in right in the middle of the upright, 17.99. And Russell guessing his birthday at 18.28, which ironically is the year he was born. All right, we got to get on out of here for this week. But before we go, Mr. Rhodes, sir, if folks want to check out your vol research, your in-depth birthday analysis, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, EQ derivatives or follow me on Twitter. Anytime I do anything, I put it out on Twitter. So I don't, I, you know, I, I don't uh, eat a snack without tweeting a picture of my food. Uh, yes. And that's just my full name at Russell Rhodes. I do see you can survive murder hornets on Twitter too. So you're, you're a very I capable, do. capable person. I'm not person. afraid of murder hornets. Capable person out there <laughs> at Russell Rhodes, two S's, two L's, R H O A D S out there on the old Twitter machine. And Mr. Rock Lobster, if folks want to check out your capital gains or all your other cool stuff, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, yes, uh, or, the, or the Cool Ball Trade Club, although we have no swag for it. Um, Optimate.com, uh, go to memberships, or you can call Ted, our customer service 
impresario at 888-301. There you go. Check him out, optionpit.com. Luigi has has exceeded. He was at 1635. Again, I tip my cap to you folks. You, you got you got to sometimes throw your, feather, your hat into the ring there to see if you're, you're going to win out there. That would have been pretty impressive, 1835. You have your hits. Hit us up. Let us know. If you're listening after the fact, send it in on Twitter or at options or, of course, questions at theoptionsider.com. We'll put you in the in the running. If you get a nice bullseye, maybe a nice winner, winner, chicken dinner for you. Just ask, just ask Options Queen and all of her glorious prizes out there. And, of course, you know where to go to check out all things Spikes. MyXOptions.com slash Spikes. That's the place to go for all that data. There's a lot of it coming out of the futures now. So check out those new records pretty much every day. Of course, a link to a cool show called Volatility Views. If you're listening live in a secret club, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in about 53 minutes to break down the crazy world of unusual activity with options oddities. If you're listening after the fact, of course, back again next week. Another episode of Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by Myax, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. Myax is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>